Now, we have discussed, we have discussed what I can term the theoretical base, including introducing the statistical knowledge about what are very crucial to DIG modeling. And now I want to now deal with the issue of modeling. And this will be in two parts. One, we are going to talk about um, the real business cycle before we now talk about DIG model. So let's start with the real business cycle. Now, to explain the DIG model, we need to start with the first generation of DG, the RBC. In fact, my understanding is that it would be good for us to understand what is RBC and build on it in order to come to the level of DIG. Uh, okay, so it applies the method of neoclassical solo growth model to issues of business cycle. It is based on real business cycle theory. Now, don't forget the purpose of RBC hmm, is to explain business cycle by incorporating stochastic technological shocks into a standard neoclassical growth model, particularly the Ramsey model. So what, what has been done was there was an introduction of stochastic shocks in what is called a real shock. And why is it real shock? It's because they expected that the only shock that perturbed the economy is coming from the technology. Okay, and then you would note from here too that we are, we are just talking about now neoclassical. That means this one is built on the classical uh, uh, theory. Okay, so the main assumption for the construction of artificial are one economic agents have rational expectations that are complete market, there are no information asymmetry, that is, there is a frictionless economy, there is continuous market clearing, as well as there is the existence of flexible prices and wages. So if you look at this closely, you know these are the assumptions of the classicals. All right, now, what are the basic features of RBC? The letter R in RBC model denotes real as opposed to nominal. You will see later what comes to this issue of real and nominal. This explains that there is no role for money or nominal variables in the model. The basic framework for RBC analysis is a neoclassical model of capital accumulation augmented by shocks to productivity. It adopts representative agents framework. That is a representative firm. And also, remember, I've told you when you come to DG, they work not with uh, sectors, they work with agents, okay, in the economy and how they interact, all right? Now, what are the gains of RBC? This methodology has become standard practice in dynamic macroeconomics and in the building of DIG models. The, the RBC models have been found to explain a large fraction of the fluctuations in GDP. And RBC model replicates the relative volatilities of consumption investment and output observed in data, okay? However, like any, all the models, what are the shortcomings of RBC? Number one, the model is largely based 
on one type of shock, the technological shock, which may not be an adequate representation of shocks to the economy or even to the output. Two, technological shocks were represented by solo residuals, that is total factor productivity, which could be poor measures of technological shock. And three, total factor productivity shocks may not be purely technological and exogenous, but could well be endogenous, all right? So, I want to talk about the short falls. We are now looking at the, some of the RBC stylus facts. You know, we have talked about stylus facts in the, in the theoretical introduction. Now, now let's look at the result from certain uh, research that we have done before. And there is the one done by Melina and Patillo. 2018, which analyzed real business cycle facts of SA countries, SSA countries, that is sub saharan African countries, and found that SSA display higher output volatility than other regions of the world. That the key shocks that could have caused that volatility include supply shock, policy shocks and external shocks. There is also inflation and output are negatively correlated. You know, these are the terms who have just been used, using. And then you have trade balances and current accounts are acyclical in SSE countries, unlike in other advanced economies and emerging economies, okay? Now, again, we can take evidence from some uh, stylized facts obtained from the Nigeria economy. And this was due to uh, alleged 2008. 20, 20, and says, where it established that economic activity in Nigeria as measured by the real GDP is volatile. It is much higher in Nigeria than in Argentina and USA. That's why you say economic activity in Nigeria is volatile. Remember how we calculated the volatility before. Number two, private consumption in Nigeria is procyclical. That's another term. It is consistent with international standards. Cross fixed investment, though, has a high relative volatility is procyclical, which is in conformity with the theoretical uh, predictions. We also find out that the government consumption expenditure is procyclical, although with very high relative volatility, while government revenue is also procyclical with the cycle. Okay? On a Employment is countercyclical, the business cycle of Nigeria. However, there is no robust correlation between unemployment and GDP. Industrial output, agricultural output, non output, and crude oil are all procyclical with the cycle. And these are the terms that we have just defined. Uh, in the previous uh, module. Now, how do I construct a basic RBC model? Now, let us endeavor to develop or construct an RBC model. This is defined by two types of agents. So here, we are only talking about two types of agents, the households and the farms. Those are the two major uh, agents. So the representative also maximizes the expected utility written as follows as the utility function U equals sum 
from t to infinity, from t equals zero to infinity of what? Of beta t and u of ct i minus t. Here, we are talking about a utility function, which depends on only two parameters, consumption and leisure, because LT is a time spent hmm, on labor and a leisure, which is uh, assumed to be equal to one. And so if you know uh, LT, we can only also know the proportion or the time spent on leisure, okay? And the summation is to help us accumulate what happens from t equals zero to infinity. And well, beta is a discount factor, okay? But you know, this, uh, the maximization problem subjected to a constraint and the constraint is given as ct plus kt plus one equals wlt plus rkt plus this plus this. That is, is consumption added to stock of capital at the end of the period or at the beginning of the next period, which is equal to the mass, uh, what you can call a wage bill, that is wage rate multiplied by uh, labor, okay, plus capital multiplied by RT means that's the rate, Abby. So this is the cost of capital. Is that right? And then you have here, uh, delta is the depreciation rate. And so you say one minus delta, that will represent what remains, I mean, what has been consumed of the capital, okay? So entertainer's utility function is assumed to be separable. Now, this functional form is now expressed as a, an entertainer's utility function of this form, where ut is now expressed in log form. So you now have, from here, you now have log ct plus omega, log one minus uh, LT, you know, for all time T. So now what we do now, we are describing the behavior of the household. And we have said it has a utility function that has to be maximized subject to a constraint. So our work here is to find the optimal condition for the household mm -hmm. and then do the same thing for the farm and then now solve the problem. Now, here we have described the household. The next is to find the optimality condition, which we have said now is just to write maximization of the original function, but now written in its log form, all right? And then subject to this that we have just described. Now, you recall that in order to optimize a particular function, you first of all establish the Lagrangian. And the Lagrangian is simply the difference between uh, the objective function and the constraints. Now here you have a constraint, you know, with the multiplier LT, I mean lambda T, and then the second part is with the expectation. That means lambda C plus one, that is in the next period, expectation of the, const I mean, the uh, constraint, okay? So here, we have now introduced t plus one, t plus one into all the variables, and you see kt plus two, because it was kt plus one initially. So when it is now going to a new uh, a period, it means we have to add 
the new uh, period that we added to all the other variables. Now, we find that if we do this, the first order condition is going to give us what we have here. Mm -hmm. That's what the first order condition will give us. That means we, are, we, we differentiate uh, this equation with respect to uh, LT. All right? Now, is it with respect to? We differentiate that equation with respect to consumption. Sorry about that. Okay, so if you do that, you can look at your equation. Where do you have CT appearing? It's only here and here. So all other ones serve as constant and they will disappear. Okay, so uh, wherever you don't see C, you just stop it. So here, you now have C one over LT, and that means this is at time t. So which we can deduce at time t plus one. So it's simply lambda t plus one. So that is the, uh, don't forget this is the Lagrangian multiplier. Okay, if we now do it the same with a label t, okay, that should be partial derivative of uh, Lagrangian with respect to this, it's going to give us this, which is equal to zero, only, okay? And then from there, we can solve the system to now have omega ct all over one minus lt, uh, which is all of these terms, all right? Now, if we do the same thing, with a feature forward-looking variables, that is the variable that we have added uh, t plus one, t plus one. We are going to get something that is very close, but you know, with a lambda t plus one, I mean t plus one, appearing with the lambda and kt and lt, all right? The resolution of that gives us this, and then, uh, you know, with respect to lambda t, will always give us the real original uh, function. Okay, so which gives us this that we talked about before. Now you can see that the first equation that we did is called the Wheeler equation, which shows the equalization of marginal utility of consumption across periods. Okay, all right.